Let's talk NFL. So I was really locked in on the young guys. I ran through it for the audience earlier, so I don't need to repeat myself on everything. Uh, overall, it wasn't good. Um, it, it it may likely it's hard, mean nothing. Right? Like, it's it's really hard. You're it's right. Hard because I, I hope the message is very clear. I'm going to share it again with you. That, okay. Yeah. Okay. That was my focus. None of it was good. Who who knows? Like whatever. I mean, it, it was just bad. But you're right. Let's stay on that point on okay. how hard it is because that I think is is probably the best way to talk about it. You're like, yep, this is a little different, man. This is a little different for you. Although Caleb should have been used to things being hard on him after last year with USC. But yeah, the three guys, the first rounders that started, wasn't good. Yeah, I, I think I think we saw I saw a good clip of the the Belichick talking about Caleb Williams. Like, yeah, he had a couple nice plays, but he's 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 not he's it wasn't accurate. The rollout to his right was the best play he had all day. But no, he was talking about like from the one of the preseason games when he was awesome. Oh, I, it yeah, was maybe yeah. on like that NFL films or, or whatever the yeah, matchup, yeah, show, whatever Long it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had a good clip on there. And everyone's like kind of hyping him up. But you see those plays. He's like, yeah, he had a couple good plays, but he wasn't accurate. And it's like, yeah, yeah, because you get caught up in it. And so in and watching him yesterday, He's got developing to do. He's he's got to learn to play the position and trust the the system and and become more consistent with his feet. He's he's never he's never been able to. So he's never had to and never really developed the consistency with his footwork, like repping it out, three, five, seven step drops, top of the drop, you know, foot and feet in balance. Like the beauty is he can do all those other things at an elite level. But in order to succeed at, at an elite level in the NFL, he's going to have to be more robotic. He's going to have to be more precise with his, and I'm not talking about the accuracy, I'm talking about the things that allow you to be accurate. And it's going to be interesting to see it, that development happen. Now, Chicago played great on special teams, play, had some great moments on defense, hung in there. They found a way to win. First guy since, uh, what, what was the stat? David like, Carr. Yeah, yeah, David Carr. That that career went well. Um, Dude, 20, some of these first rounders would hope they could be David Carr. No, I'm not talking about the 24 class. I'm just talking yeah, about some yeah. of the other guys that didn't work out. So, so my point is, it, it was frustrating to watch at times, uh, but it's going to be a process. It's going to be a process. Jaden Daniels, like we talked about, I remember getting Saruti to try to look up the Looney Tunes last year. Um, the clips of him running out of control. And it, it's, I got to find this thing on, on X again. It, it's one of the funniest clips I've seen in a long time. Just like 15, 20 different highlights of him running out of control and then just getting whacked like a Looney Tune, like body parts falling, flailing everywhere. He's got to learn how to slide, bro. <laughs> He's got to learn how to slide. I can't believe, like, look, I don't have as high hopes for Bo Nix as I do the other quarterbacks, Okay. Uh, and as I've discussed, I, I'm willing and ready to be wrong on literally everything. Yeah, I'll get to Bo in a minute, okay? but go ahead. But Jaden, who I have higher hopes for than Bo, I would say if actually the three quarterbacks, even though Jaden had the best stats, I found his game the most frustrating out of the three guys. Why? Because as soon as it was on for him to run, he's like, I'm just going to run. And I don't think you can run an offense that way. I think it looks cool at times, and he got his two touchdowns, but if that's how quickly you're bailing back here, it's it's one thing to get sacked. It's one thing to make the wrong read. It's one thing to even throw a pick because you don't understand the coverage and all that kind of stuff that goes along with it or realizing like there's throws from the end zone cam that I'll look at where I'll go. That's crazy. Like in the NFL, you can't make that throw into the end zone, even though the guy looks on the screen grab like he's open by seven yards because the safety is going to jump in front of that pass and he's going to pick you in the end zone. Like you think these things look open in this screen grab world or some of the end zone stuff, and the NFL quarterback that becomes terrific knows like none of those passes are actually ones that will work. I can't make any of those throws. I would rather see those mistakes sometimes from some of the younger guys than being scared to death of ever throwing it. So what I'm asking for sounds ridiculous as if I'm asking for interceptions. I thought the game that Jaden played gave his offense – the least amount of chance to actually get into the fucking play that they called because he was off and running immediately. And that's not even getting into the part where he can't slide. You remember the story I told you about Brian Kelly before the um, Tennessee game? Was it two years ago now? Or Yeah, right. Because two years ago, he wouldn't make any throws that he thought he couldn't. Like, was, uh, he's right. got to let it rip. 
He's right. got to let it rip. Like, and then it, it clicked. It clicked for him. I, I cannot believe. It, right. it pissed yeah. off how, how every reporter in Baton Rouge was, was patting him on the back. No interceptions through like five and a half, five games or whatever it was. He's like, I want him to throw a pick. I want him to like to show me that he he like is going to trust to read and actually throw the ball, get it out on time. And, and and then like the Tennessee game didn't go well. That was that was when uh, Hendon Hooker and they were Tennessee was rolling. They lost that game. But I told you on the very first play, like it was so clear. Like, Brian was telling me on the sideline like five minutes before they went back in before kickoff. He's like, he's got to, he's got to get it out. He's got to let it rip. He's got to trust his reads. He can throw with anticipation. He is accurate, but he's not trusting it. Yeah. And then the first throw of that game was a comeback route. I was standing in the end zone behind him and like the 25 yard line, he's throwing a deep comeback, comeback route. And the ball was out before the receiver broke. And it was, I promise you, Brian all week was like, listen, first play, we're on the deep out a deep comeback to the left sideline. If you don't get this fucking ball out on time, like we are going to have a problem. <laughs> I don't care what happens. Throw a pick six. Like, get it out on time. Show me you can do this, and let's start rolling from there. And he did, and it was a completion. It was a beautiful ball. And so, like, that game didn't go well, but but you saw from that point on him start to trust it. It's easy, though, to revert back as a quarterback to when you were in that protective mode. Think about it. Like, when you go to do something for the first time, you're kind of protecting and you're, you're nervous and you're, you're not sure of your environment. You, you don't trust it. So his natural instinct has always been see it open. If it ain't open to see it, I'm going to run. He's been doing, he did that in high school, did that at Arizona state, did it early on at LSU. Now he's back. So he got coached out of it. And so now he's in the NFL and it feels fast again. It feels like when he went from college, from high school to college, it feels like when he went from Arizona state to LSU in the beginning. And so it's going to take time, but he has shown that he can work his way out of it. So if there's something like, yes, it's maddening. Yesterday was frustrating to watch. I get it, but hopefully it's something that can be worked out of him. Like it was at LSU. Okay. Anything on Bo Nix? So I said to you last year, after the draft, remember we did like kind of a recap show that this, uh, in my opinion, th- this would be the, that, and I, we're kind of jokingly saying it, but like the arrogance of Sean Payton to take Bo Nix at 12, right? But then also backed it up with the respect I have for Sean Payton. And if there's anyone who could do it, he's on a very short list that can make this work. But I respectfully disagreed with his assessment of Bo Nix. But again, it's his system. He's met with him and got, gotten into his mind and understood like what drives him and all that. And so he thinks that it can work. Then, so you're looking at it and say, my evaluation, not as high as him in number 12. But Sean Payton has, has a proven track record, great with quarterbacks, knows what he's looking for, loves this guy. So let's see how it plays out. The only thing I would say to this point is, A, it's one game. B, it was ugly. C can't throw into triple coverage. Like Archuleta was great. And I don't know if you watched it. <laughs> yeah, was, yeah, yeah. He's like, the ball didn't even come out. He goes, Oh no. I think he said, Oh no. <laughs> and then like it picked, it was picked. And he, oh, like, the caught. second one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The second one, the second one, he goes, Oh no. And then the ball comes out of his hand, <laughs> gets picked. And then he wait, he paused, you know, let the, the uh, play by play guy announce it. He's like, you can't make that decision. You can't make that throw. And then you, we watched the replay and three guys around him. My point, bigger picture point in this is I, everyone who went through Denver from Diana Rossini to like Schefter to like the report was they're in love with Bo. And so I watched two of the preseason games. It's Steve Levy, my guys, he's calling the games and, and I, I'm watching and I'm like, uh Oh, Sean was right. Like, he, he looks great. You know, Bo looked great in the preseason, but it was it against number twos. Who was, what was the competition? So, and th- so now you've got all this hype coming out of camp. Everyone's talking about how like, he's going to be the best rookie quarterback in the class. And again, it's week one. So maybe he will be, but it, 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 it looked a lot like in week one against Seattle, it looked a lot like I expected it to look when the draft pick was turned in. And I said to you, I don't see this. I'm not yeah. saying I'm right. I'm right. like he's going to get better. Sean will will absolutely coach him coach him out of some of the mistakes. We will, we will see a steady improvement arc. I'm there's no question about it. But I, I guess it's just a quick caution tale of like maybe don't overhype your rookie quarterback. Maybe don't have him go in the for the first game of the year saying that he's like he's the guy. 
Like I listened to like 15 minutes from Diana Rossini, who's just reporting what, what the conversation she's having. And it was compelling, very compelling. But talking about like, this is the, this is the stamp he needed on this organization. This is exactly, you know, the guy that they expected him to be when they drafted him. They're thrilled with his development and all those things can be true, but to send him out there week one after a couple of good preseason games with everyone nationally having this sense of like Bo's ready, here we go, off and running, I think is like a disservice a little bit. Look, it's hard. It's one week. Yeah. It likely means nothing. But if we said that, the podcast is two minutes long. So, That's true. Uh, we can talk about what we saw, knowing it may mean nothing. 